Hi, this is Holly with Blue Barn Fiber, and I'm just making a quick video to show you some of the ways that you can use silk hankies. We sell silk hankies in our shop, either dyed or undyed. And as you can see, they take color beautifully. The way that you use them is going to completely depend on what your end use is, but they're very versatile. A lot of people use silk hankies in Nuno felting in place of like a silk scarf. You can just layer the hankies in the pattern that you want and sandwich them in between two thin layers of wool and then felt them. Another thing that you can do with silk hankies is you can actually knit from them without spinning them into yarn. Um, and that's because of the nature of the hankies. They're basically cocoons that have been spread out um, and made flat like a hanky, hence the name. So to start, what you wanna do is peel a thin layer off. The thickness depends on what you want. How th um, the, For this example, we're gonna look at making yarn out of it. Um, and you can do thicker yarn or thinner yarn depending on what you're looking for for your specific project. But you can see from the side of the hankies that there's these really fine layers. And this handful consists of probably hundreds of different cocoons layered into each other. So what you wanna do is you wanna peel off a small amount. This is one hanky here. Um, we'll just go ahead and peel it off from here. And it comes apart really easily. And you can see how thin this is. You can actually see through it to get an idea. And you can just keep going, peeling off as many as you want for your project or just do it as you go. Just like that. So to turn this into yarn, you actually, it's really easy. You want to spread it out in your hands, find the center, and then pull it apart. And you'll get this sort of circular shaped thing here. And you can just keep on pulling it until it's the thickness that you want. I really like keeping it kind of thick because it's so soft and wonderful feeling. When you spin yarn, you're twisting it, and that takes away some of the softness of the actual fibers. But when you use the hanky as a hanky, instead of twisting it, you're just knitting with the actual fibers themselves, which are incredibly strong, but also incredibly soft. And since you don't have to twist it, you keep all of that softness. So it's really an amazing fiber to work with in this form. Of course, I love all things silk, um, but this is just a really unique way of working with it. So once you get it to the thickness that you want, you can go ahead and tear it off so that you no longer have a circular shape. And then this is basically kind of like a sliver or roving form. Just one long piece of silk. And as you have these little bumps here, you can just kind of draft them out a little bit to make it as thin as you want it to be. So at this point, you can just take the fiber that you've just created and you can cast on as you normally would, just like it's yarn. And the fibers, even though they're not twisted and spun into a yarn, will stay together. As I said before, silk is incredibly strong, especially in this form when it hasn't completely been pulled apart. So now you've got your yarn, for lack of better words. And you can see that because of the way that we pulled the silk hanky apart, you've got all sorts of color in each individual spot. So it's really just an incredibly beautiful yarn that you can then create your knitted piece with.
All right, so now that we've got um, the first part of the little roving that I made knitted up, as you can see, one thing that everybody that handles silk hankies will notice is that they feel really sticky. If you have any little cuts or anything in your fingers, any calluses or, you know, chewed nails, it's going to stick to them. Drives my husband crazy. But one thing that you will notice is that after you knit it up, that is no longer an issue. It's just like silk uh, fabric. It's very lustrous. It's very soft. It's very beautiful. And there's no stick factor. So it's much nicer to work with once you actually have knitted it up. So now that we're at the close to the end of the first part that we pulled apart, um, you'll want to go ahead and do that again with another um, similar sized piece. And again, you can determine the color changes based on where you pull it from. You don't have to pull it from the middle. If you want a little bit more uh, just green, you can pull it from here. If you want the green to mix with the blue, you can pull it from here. So it all depends on what you want. You are in control. For this, um, I'll just go ahead and pull it from the middle again. And again, you can make it super thin, like lace weight yarn, if you just keep on pulling. Um, I like it a little bit thicker, so I'm not going to pull it that much. When you see the end of this, you're going to want to start from the same color in order for it to blend seamlessly. So that would be about here for us. And just go ahead and pull it apart and you can start knitting again draft it out so it's the proper thickness and then all you have to do is layer it with the existing yarn that you've created just like that so the old ends here about and the new starts here. That overlap will make it nice and strong. You won't be able to tell that there's even a seam. You don't have to start with the same color, but obviously it just makes it look smoother if you do. Um, you can mix it up and add a different color in if you want, and that works too. But then you just go ahead and keep on going as before, and you can create pretty much anything with silk hankies. Dyed hankies are a bit more expensive than undyed because they do take quite a bit of practice to dye. Um, but it's so rewarding to use this type of fiber. It's so much fun and again, it's just so unique. So I hope that you enjoyed my video and I hope that you will give silk hankies a try. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching.